HustleCon's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. My name's Adam Draper. I'm founding, founder and managing director of Boost VC. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about fundraising. Uh, how many people, sorry, these lights, I can't really see everyone, but how many people are, have started a business? And how many people have actually gone through the fundraising process? Okay, so less of you. So this is going to be relevant to most of you. Um, I, that's great. And it'll be relevant to all the people who have actually raised their hands. Uh, so my name is Adam Draper. I'm a fourth generation venture capitalist. Uh, I'm a, a founder of, uh, I founded a company called Expert Financial in 2009. Uh, I founded Boost VC in 2012 from, basically I help entrepreneurs not make the mistakes I made with Expert Financial. Um, and then I've invested in about 130 companies at this point. Collectively, they've raised about $300 million. And I see about 1,200 pitches uh, every year. So I've, I've also, I've, it's not up here, and be probably because it wasn't relevant, but I was on Nickelodeon at one point. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> nailed it. Um, the, <laughs> uh, but, uh, so I'm, I, basically all this means is uh, my, my ancestors raised money and helped people raise money. Uh, I've raised money for different things, uh, and I really enjoy helping entrepreneurs get better at what they do. Um, so, uh, today's talk, I'm, I, I have 10 minutes to tell you all I know about fundraising, which uh, it, it could be a longer conversation, but I'm going to give you about seven points uh, that I believe might help in the fundraising process. It's more like concepts to wrap your head around when you're going through the process. Okay, my first, my first uh, piece of advice is fundraising is very difficult. Uh, it took uh, Christopher Columbus seven years to raise money from Queen Isabella uh, in order to travel across the ocean in order to find India. And he failed epically at that. Um, and he found, I, I always picture like Christopher Columbus like going back and saying like, oh man, I didn't find India. Um, but fundraising is really difficult. When, <laughs> when, 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 when fundraising is incredibly difficult. Uh, when I was pitching to raise money for uh, Boost, I emailed 3,000 people. Uh, I met with 350 of those investors. 3,000 investors met with 350. And I ended up with uh, over about uh, 35 investors. Um, and so it was about 10% decline, but, uh, and it took 12 months to do this. So it was uh, 12 months, November 2013 to uh, November 2014, I was fundraising. Um, and that's really, really hard. It's mentally trying. It, so yes, 35 people said yes to me. Uh, that means that 315 people said no. Uh, and dealing with that is a really, really difficult thing every day. Uh, and so, I, so really just start if you're going through that process, just know going into it that's going to be really difficult. Uh, and make sure that you're ready for the trying trials and tribulations you're going to be going through. Um, okay, number two. Once you've wrapped your head around the fact that it's going to be difficult, uh, use these meetings to meet cool people. Um, I got to meet uh, everyone on Sand Hill Road, uh, up to Fortune 500 CEOs, um, and... I used every meeting just as a connection. The most important thing that you can get out of uh, a fundraising meeting is a connection to someone because uh, that's not going to be the first time you run into that person. Um, it, it, I have a later one, later piece of advice that's going to be about uh, how no one invests the first time. But basically, you, you should be thinking about this as a, a connection for a a long period of time, someone who you will be able to ask for advice uh, if you have a really good connection with them. So just use fundraising as a way to meet a bunch of really, really great people over the course of a very long period of time. It's literally like running into a wall repeatedly for 12 months. Uh, I, getting rejected 315 times in a year is not really all that fun. It's literally like I spent the year just getting rejected. Um, and then someone said yes, I was like, oh my god, thank you. Um, okay. Uh, Third, pitch your company to everyone. Uh, this, is, this, this means, so basically, VCs and angel investors love having prepared entrepreneurs. Uh, and in order to be prepared for your angel investor and VC meetings, have your friends, pitch your friends. Have your friends ask you questions. Uh, it turns out VCs and angels aren't the only ones who ask good questions. Um, actually, we probably ask worse questions than anyone else. Um, and, and you can learn about your business and how people are perceiving your business. Uh, and I, I, 
I really think that a lot of entrepreneurs don't do this before they get into a meeting with someone. Uh, test it. And if you're not willing to actually test your pitch on one of your friends, like, you're not going to be doing well in an angel or VC meeting. Um, that's just it, it, like generally how it goes. If you feel like embarrassed by your, your product, you're, I have to pitch Boost every single day. Um, you have to be pitching your business three to ten times every day in order to really get good at it and formulate your, your entire concept. Um, okay, uh, this is an unfortunate consequence of fundraising. Um, you have no money until it's in the bank. So I, uh, when, when I went through the fundraising process, you will meet a lot of uh, yes-men investors. Uh, and like you will get them to say yes in that meeting, uh, and that's fantastic. And then uh, like you you will try to follow up with them, and then they might be late on re replying. And then uh, you know you have a couple emails back and forth, and then all of a sudden like it's been two months, and they're not going to be wiring you any money. Um, and like that that's very disheartening because they gave you like it, it, they gave you that moment where you're like, oh man, this person said yes, and then they ripped it away from you. Uh, which is the worst feeling in the world. So just know, like, again, this is a part of, like, fundraising is difficult. But just know you have no money until it's in the bank. No money is committed. And so what this should do is make you feel, once someone says yes, some of our investors, actually, I don't, I don't necessarily recommend this, but basically what they do is they have convertible notes of different amounts in their backpack, and they literally will push it across the table and be like, if someone says yes, they're like, how much? And... Uh, <laughs> And, 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 it, it, and like, it, but it, it's literally, it, the, the concept is there where it's like, you have a ticking time bomb of getting that money from their bank account to your bank account. So just know that it's not, nothing until the money's in the bank. Uh, clicker. Uh, it did for this entrepreneur, for the record. Okay, five. Uh, it, it, this is the, the one. Investors invest in lines, not dots. The first time you meet an, an investor, that is the first time you exist. You did not exist previously for that investor, for anyone in, in their, their minds. And so they're thinking, okay, so now I want to see this entrepreneur start a track record. This is day zero for this entrepreneur. And so over the course of time, the reason accelerators like Boost, uh, YC, uh, all these other accelerators are really good is that you, you have three months, investors trust us, and we help companies build a track record over the course of three months. And so what you want it, so lines, not dots, basically, I'm stealing this from a really great entrepreneur. His name's Jeff Siebert. I forgot to say that at the beginning of the slide. I always want to give credit where credit's due. He's awesome. Um, but uh, investors invest in lines, not dots, basically just means you need, you cannot think that an investor is going to invest the first time that you meet them. Uh, do not ever think that. It is the first time that yeah, it, just don't think that. So uh, over the course of time, like, just keep that investor updated. The best entrepreneurs, they email me every month and update me on what, what has gone well and what has not gone well over the last month. That is all the best entrepreneurs, I, literally. Um, and they're very consistent about it. And it, it, also, if you do a monthly report, basically it gives you a, an idea of what happened over the last month for yourself. You're able to summarize it for yourself. But it's really important to keep investors updated. Um, I'm sort of running out of time, but up, oh, okay. Uh, investors invest in team traction or hype. Uh, so basically, team I've, I've referred to traction is really really important. Get your product out there. Um, hype is something that like I've seen entrepreneurs do this, uh, and it's basically you convince an investor and all of the investor's friends. Uh, that you are the coolest thing at a moment in time. And it is really, really difficult to do. I do not recommend trying, like, going out and being like, I'm going to raise off of hype. Um, I, rec I mean, the best way to do, like, the best way to fundraise is to have a good product and good traction that is, like, real traction. Um, and, yeah, so the, the, that's that. Okay, my, the seventh point is have a plan B. Um, Assume, I mean, you really don't want to assume you're not going to raise money, but realistically, you might not. You still need, if you are truly setting out to solve a problem in the world and you really want to make it, that difference happen, it sh money should not be the reason that that difference doesn't get it, happen. Um, so you should have a plan B on cutting costs, on making sure that everything happens the way that you want it to. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, okay, here, I'm skimming through this. this okay. Fundraising is a means to an end. Uh, so basically, make sure uh, that wasn't, yeah, I don't need to explain it. I'll explain it if anyone wants to ask me later. Uh, but the, 
Fundraising is a means to end. You need to grow faster. You need to hire someone. You need to get an engineer. You need to, there are a lot of things that you need to do and you need that money for. You should not be thinking that it's, a, it's an element of, of success. Um, a lot, there's, a, there's a weird mentality in the Silicon Valley right now where if someone fundraises, it makes them feel that they have been successful. Uh, it should not be, that is not the mentality that you need to have. You are using that money as a tool to grow your business. Um, that's one of the most important things that you should be able to walk away from this presentation with. In addition to that, something to think about if you are in that fundraising process. Uh, Microsoft, eBay, Viva Systems collectively raised $11 million when they were fundraising. Uh, and that is uh, now on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange worth $420 billion uh, for market caps. You don't need to raise a lot of money to make a big impact. I, I'm an investor, and the best, in, the, the best companies don't raise all that much money. Um, it's a really important thing. Don't think that fundraising is the end goal. Fundraising is not the end goal. The end goal is building, make, pr solving the problem you set out to solve. Um, and that's all. That's my presentation. Hopefully you enjoyed it.